to medigos today we are with a new topic that is renal stone case with notes in this we will uh, give a case study like uh, a clinical presentation how a renal stone patient is presented and after that we will discuss the notes regarding to it now uh, you will be thinking why first case presentation and after that notes because when you go through the case presentation how the patient is presenting and when you need the notes you can correlate and uh, know much better about it rather than the textbook like we'll read the notes then a uh, case presentation but as uh, you are all mbbs graduates and also mbbs students so it will be much more easier like if you see a case after that we will correlate it so let's go uh, so uh, we can tell that a 40 years old female patient coming from bihar presented with chief complaint like pain in the left groin for one year swelling in the left groin for six year uh, six months, sorry, and the history of the parenting illness like she was apparently well one year back when she developed gradually onset of uh, dull aching pain in the left groin. Now uh, I'm emphasizing more on the left groin so that in your mind you make a picture why I am saying always left groin. Now uh, she was having uh, the pain is constant in nature mild in severity, non radiating and somewhat relieved after passing urine and analgesics. She also noticed the swelling in the left groin for last six months, insidious on onset, gradually increasing in size, which used to diminish in size when she passes urine. Now, uh, make a note of it, five, uh, after passing urine, it used to get diminished in size. There's no history of rapid increase in size, so you can rule out tumor or something. Now, no history of blood in the urine or fever, so infection is ruled out. You keep this in mind, you think this in mind, what all the history it is having, so that it will be easy for you. She passes urine five to six times a day and doesn't wake up at night to pass urine. She has no difficulty in passing urine. There is no history of similar symptoms in past or no history of diabetes mellitus or hypertension, TB, etc. No history of similar symptoms in family. She has hand pump for uh, drinking water source and uh, she is non-smoker and non-alcoholic. She belongs to lower middle class family so economic history you can know and uh, what's the drinking habit and everything you come to know now on examination a general survey it is normal right and cell stable you can do that pill cyclode you can think that and on examination on in inspection we can see that contour of the abdomen and umbilicus are normal there is slight fullness in the left lumbar region and the left renal angle on palpation temperature is normal and tenderness is absent over the abdomen the left kidney is palpable. Now you can get a clear picture why the left kidney is palpable. The uniform in nature, that is, we can tell uh, approximate 19 to 16 size, moving slightly and down with respiration. Now, when the swelling is slightly mobile from side to side and uh, above downwards, all the margin of the swelling are palpable and rounded, and the surface is smooth and the uh, consistency is tense, stick, and the hand can be inserted between the swelling and loft left costal margin now the in over the palpation you can see all these uh, findings are coming and on percussion the swelling is dull and there's a band of resonance in front of the swelling other organs are not palpable and there is no lump in uh, the body uh, no fluid no free fluid in the abdomen systemic uh, examination is normal so that we can say that diagnosis is left sided and also known as hydronephrosis when hydronephrosis you can see as you discuss the skin, the left skin is palpable, any form in nature, and uh, everything that it is. So, there is increasing size. Now, we will go through the notes, detail notes, and everything so that you can correlate. Now, what is renal stone? You know it. Why renal stones are uh, causing? Now, we can say that etiology we have nine etiologies. First, like dietary, vitamin A deficiency causes desquamation of the epithelium, then formation of needles, and stone is formed. Altered urinary stones, altered urinary solutes and colloids. Dehydration increases the uh, concentration of uh, urinary solutes precipitated and leads to stone formation. Urinary colloids that is absorbed solutes or uh, chelates uh, calcium leads to stone formation. Decrease urinary citrate, which is normal uh, 300 to uh, 900 ml for 24 hours. Citrate keeps insoluble calcium phosphate in soluble state. Renal infection like urea splitting uh, streptococci. Staphylococci and proteus. Inadequate urinary drainage and urinary stasis also will lead to renal uh, stone. 
prolonged immobilization like skeletal irrigation and urinary calcium leads to stone formation hyperparathyroidism like hyper calcemia and hyper calcidia leads to stone formation renal plaque erosion and deposition of the calcium at the tip of renal papilla also leads to stone formation cars postulates like microliths in the renal parenchyma are carried by lymphatic to subendothelial region uh, where they accumulate ulceration of epithelium exposed potential calculus to urine stone formation so what are the types of the stone now uh, in the stone 75 percent are oxalates what are these irregular with sharp projection which is mulberry shape it causes bleeding surface pigmented due to altered blood very hard and radio opaque oxalate stones are radio opaque and others uh, like phosphate also it uh, it can be maximum to 10 to 15 percent in all stones we see now the phosphate are calcium phosphate or calcium magnesium nh4 plus phosphate triple stone it can be uh, smooth and dry white these stones are forms in alkaline urine in presence of proteus organism because splits urea into and ammonia ammonium calculus enlarge filling most of the renal calices uh, stocking their shapes like stegon calculus clinically these are silent and these are radiopaque also a uric stone and urate stone uh, these are smooth hard yellow to reddish brown color multiples multifaceted appearance and these are radiolucent not radiopaque keep in mind the uric and urate stones are radiolucent now cysteine urine it occurs in the cystinuria, congenital area or autosomal recessive, hexagonal in shape, translucent, white appearing acidic urine, multiple pink or yellow in color, change to greenish urine one exposure, form cast of renal pelvis and calyces. These are radiopaque and these are very hard. And uh, others are like xanthan, these are smooth, round, big red in color. Uh, uh, and uh, it will be like clinically, you can see it is lamellar, lamellar appearance. These are the types. Now, what are the clinical features of stone? The symptoms can be, it can be occur in the age of 30 to 50 years. Male leads to female leads to 4 to 3. Silent calculus. Last egg on calculus, no symptom for long period during which these are progressive destruction to renal parenchyma. When bilateral uremia occurs. Secondary infection also cause symptoms like pain, fixed renal pain, pain, ureteric uh, colic caused by stone entering the ureter or lodged in the pelvic ureteric junction, lump in the loin, you can see hematuria, dirty and smoky urine, pydia, pus in the urine or opalescent urine due to the infection or irritation of uh, urethelium without uh, infection and infection is there, then there will be fever. Now, what can be the signs in the renal stone? Signs will be like tenderness at the renal angle, kidney pouch test we can do, which will be positive, rigidity if acute infection occurs over the kidney, swelling in the flank will be there, like we saw the presentation, case presentation before this and there is swelling also. Now in investigation what we can do, plain x-ray KUB you can do which 90% radio opaque can be seen, IVU we, IV you can do, do to see renal function and hydronephrosis, USG also we can do detect the radiolucent stone, size of the kidney, changes in renal parenchyma, uh, blood, uh, uh, test we can do like for serum calcium, phosphate, creatinine, blood urea, uric acid, PTH level, urine you can see uh, routine or microbiology or uh, culture we can do, calcium, urate also we can see in the urine, cysteine if substitute only, pH we can see specific gravity and also we can do investigation like retrograde uh, pyelography. Now what is the treatment? Now coming to the main part is treatment. Now treatment can be two parts, conservative and surgery. And in conservative, if the size of uh, stone is like uh, less than 0.5 cm, it will pass naturally in urine and you have to drink plenty of water. Also, uh, flush therapy you can do, IV fluids you can give, injection like furosemide 60 to 80 mg you can give, anti-inflammatories we give, uh, preoperative treatment like uh, we have to do if there is UTI is present, appropriate antibiotic is given uh, and uh, before and after surgery. Now, what are the surgical uh, treatment for it? First is PCNL uh, for cutaneous nephrolithotomy. And the indication for PCNL is like ESWL, which is extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy. Is inappropriate or risk of reoccurrence is there, then we do PCNL. And the stone is more than 2.5 centimeter, multiple stone is there, tegon calculus is there, hard like cysteine stone is there, anatomical abnormality kidney, 
or the patient obesity or scoliosis coexistence existing obstructive uropathy and the complication it will be like hemorrhage uh, and profusion of collecting the profusion of colon or pleural cavity it can be the complication of it now uh, ESW also a uh, choice for the surgery that is extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy now in this tone is removed with shock waves which are produced at uh, 2 per second uh, 1000 to 4000 shocks are required for each tone uh, now it has advantage like no NSS is required can be done in the operative procedure if less than 2.5 centimeters stone and well fragmented can be done hard stone auxiliary stone are better eliminated and can be done repeatedly in different settings so no problem and can switch over to PSNL if not successful. So you have uh, better options for it. Now these surgeries are also contraindicated like in pregnancy, bleeding disorders, patient with uh, abdominal aneurysm, sepsis and renal failure. Now sir, if serum creatinine is more than 3 mg percent uh, and uh, the cysteine and metric stone, poly draining of hydronephrotic kidneys, then these are the contraindications. Now the complication of it like ureteric colic stone fragment pass through the ureteric as the completion of it infection also it can lead to the vector pressure in the calculation release will be there and infection will be caused open surgery like uh, pyelolithotomy with the stone is external pelvis then we can do pyelolithotomy and extended pyelolithotomy in intrarenal pelvis if the stone is there you can do that and uh, nephrolithotomy can done in incision in brodel's line you know what it is and uh, nephropylolithotromy both over the kidney and pelvis, the stone can be removed. Now we discuss the uh, renal stone. Also, if we don't discuss the ureteric calculi, it will be like incomplete. So uh, ureteric calculi, always it is renal origin. Now you can see we discussed if complication is there that it can pass to the uh, the fragment of can go to the ureter. And the sites will be like constriction in ureter. If there is constriction, it will be the main site for the ureteric calculi. Now the clinical features will be like pain, ureteric uh, colic pain, dysuria, and uh, frequency will be more in the urine, uh, strangury, hematuria will be there, tenders in the iliac force and renal angle will be there. Invigation, investigation is same as the renal stone investigation that we discussed like X-ray, IVU, USG, blood and retrograde or pilogram. And uh, the treatment, here the treatment will be conservative like the same as the renal stone research surgery also you can do if the if the size of stone is more than 5 to 8 mm so we, it is the indication for surgery i view shows deterioration of function you can do coexistence of infection if infection is there then surgery you have to do impacted stone in the ureteric with persistent symptoms is there, then we have to go for surgery now also uh, there is an approach to uh, removal of ureteric stone like if it is the in the ureteric if the stone is in upper third then we can do flus ESWL, PCNL, URS, or open ureteral lithotomy, you can do. If it is in middle third of the ureter, then we can uh, go with the approach like flush URS, open ureteral lithotomy. And it is, if it is in lower third, like you can go for flush URS, uh, dormia basket, ureteric uh, metotomy, open ureteral lithotomy. So you got an idea how to approach for the ureteric stone. So this is all. We discussed about the case presentation of renal stone and the notes about it. If you are interested in joining uh, subject price group, the link is there, M4PG, or you can find it in www.m4pg.com. And for subject price group, you have to join our telegram. And uh, the main telegram is like at the rate M4PG, you'll get telegram. And if you want to join the subject of telegram group, just type M4PG and the subject, like for anatomy, M4, at the rate M4PG anatomy in telegram will get for every subject in telegram we are having also you can join our instagram for daily updates and all the social links hope the renal stone with the notes case presentation is helpful to you again we will uh, come up with a new topic next week with i will i think this time i will not take the uh, case presentation already two three classes i have taken I, this time i will take with uh, the dietary uh, with uh, what all diet you have to take for a disease like renal disease or everything i'll go for it also i, I think i will upload some dietary advices uh, so meet you next week thank you till then have a happy studying thanks